Morehead State in the gold uh, uniforms and uh, Ellis Lloyd in the royal blue. They've got the basketball to begin things. Number 12 is Noah Young, one of the guards. And the man to watch over there is Philpott, the big guy that just 6'10", just took the shot on the left wing. We'll get the starting lineups here in just a second. With that in mind, Moorhead's got the basketball. And, uh, and here's the starting line that's brought your way by Jostens, Janai Broom, Potter, Holloway, and Cooper. You see, just for the opening tip, give it to Janai Broom. Let him go to work. Colin Sturgill, he's a 6'10 junior. He's from Wise, Virginia. He's got his hands full with a man that is probably in the running to be the player of the year in the Ohio Valley Conference. Here's Damon Tober, Tober just shot 6'4 sophomore, puts it up and in, and uh, just like that, we've got our first tie of the ball game here. So Broom and Tober got on the books very quickly. Here's a nice pass down inside and putting it up and in. No question about it is Janai Broom again. He lives down in that paint. Yeah, he, Janai is such a good athlete. He's got good feet. He's uh, not very big. He's 6'10". It goes about 245, so he spreads out that weight. But he's got a really good first step. He moves very well. He's got a good instinct on how to play in the post. Well, Tober, Tober just buried a three, his first of the game, number nine on the season for him. He comes in hitting 33% behind the arc. Moorhead now down by one, five, four. Alice Lloyd's first win, uh, lead, and here's a jump shot from the wing. No good that time by Holloway. And with the basketball coming down the floor on the fly now will be Noah Young. Young has it. Back over to Tobler. Sturgill, Tobler, Philpott, Young, and Sloan for the uh, Alice Lloyd Eagles. Coming in 13 and 0. There's a little ball handler right now. They kick the ball back out again out to Noah Young. Nice pass this way here. Blocked up there. How about that block by Broom? Janai Broom, very good shot blocker. That's 41 blocks on the year for the big man from Plant City, Florida. One thing he has, he's not only 6'10", but he has long length, and he's yeah. got those long arms. He's got a big you can see reach. it there on the replay. That's what he does. Yeah, big, long So reach. well. So, Moorhead's got the basketball now. We've got a 4-4 tie, they say, up there now. Our, our second tie of the ball game. Tobler's shot was, in fact, a two and not a three. So, Cooper, this is the basketball. Along with that, he's picking it up, going three-quarter court. Blocked out of there that time by, and he's putting it back up and in. How about Tobler? He's got six points. All six belong to him. Coming in, averaging 11.7. Started all 13 games for Alice Lloyd. The Alice Lloyd Eagles, little 3 2 point drop zone. Good ball move to get a wide There's open. There's a long look. three ball out on the wing by Potter, will not fly. And just like that, it's 6 4 Alice Lloyd. Going back this way again, getting it back in and over to Sturgill. Sturgill maybe play pass out on the left wing. And now kicking it back, got good active hands that time by Holloway, but there's a jump shot from 40 feet, will not fly. And way up to get it is Potter. Scholar Potter plays about as big as about anybody in Morehead State, who's only being 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, Here again, Holloway, the, the scoop pass to Broom, goes out of his uh, reach, and off his fingertips, and out of bounds. That'll be a turnover. Second turnover of the game. Terry Hollowell might have been better off. It was a pretty good pass. I, I think Janai Broom, if you asked him later, say, you know, I should have anticipated that was coming to him because it yeah. went right through his hands. But Hollowell might have been better served just going right up with that and, and taking it himself. He had a big night against uh, Xavier back Wednesday night. Finished with 19 points. That's a season high for him. Again with the basketball, Bryce Sloan, this is, this is a little uh, point guard out there. He does everything, can shoot the three ball. He has 33 of those, but Tobler right now making an impact early on here. Back to Sturgill's jump shot, will not fly. Way up to get the basketball is to Cooper. Elon Cooper. Long three ball, nothing but the nylon. A Seabury puts it up and in. A three ball for Jalen Seabury coming in. Jalen Seabury shot the three exceptionally well this year. That makes him now eight of 17 on the year, just under 50%. When you say you shoots it well, if you, he's hitting 43%, Dean. That's good. Anytime over 40, you're hitting it. Oh, yeah. Here's Philpott. Bingo. He's got it again. A three ball for, for Philpott. 
That's his eighth of the season. Just like that, it's nine to seven. A couple of lead changes so far in the game. Cooper, back to Potter, jump shot, straight away, nothing but the nylon again. Nice jump shot out front that time by Holloway. 10 to nine, a third lead change now. Back and forth we go. Over the basketball right now, the Eagles have it. Sloan's gonna drive down in the paint, loses the basketball, another turnover there. And he's gonna go three quarter court, putting it up no good, rebounded by Broom and he puts it up and in. Jalen Seaver got caught up in the air. I think he was gonna try to dump it over to Broom and the defense collapsed. Yeah. Got caught up in the air, so throw it up on the glass. He knows that he and Broom are both more athletic and bigger than anybody else on that end of the floor. Good chance to get a second chop, second chance at it. Well, with that in mind now, Moore has to get out to a three point lead, 12 to nine. Driving layup, nice play that time, no doubt about it by Noah Young. They've got four of the five starters averaging double figures now. They come in averaging uh, right at uh, 81 a game and hold that position to 67 for a plus 14. Yeah, Ellis Lloyd likes to get up and down the floor. They'll turn some offense into defense every once in a while, but they don't mind running a bit. That's their DNA. And jump shot, Cooper for a three. If it goes, yes, sir, mark it down. Well, another trade, and that right now, the, the uh, Eagles of Moore had come in with 93 trades on the season at 35%. That'll get the job done easily. Yeah, they, uh, they started out the year, they didn't shoot it particularly well, but they've gotten a lot better the last, oh, four or five games. Their percentage has gone up. They've looked a lot better at shooting that. Well, there's Sloan having another wide open look, a long shot, 30 feet easy, yeah, and it comes off lot. the rim again. He'd be open too if he shot it from the parking lot. <laughs> Potter, back over to Holloway now. He's going to be on the left-handed dribble, pulls up. Bing. Uh, so it's not a bad leg. they got a pretty good team. Um, I like how they're not trying to do anything funky. They're going to play in their system. Their system is they like to get up and down the floor when they can. Uh, they've got some athletic kids, and they're not afraid to shoot the basketball either. There's a loose ball right there on the baseline that picked up over here. This guy's in trouble over here. We're talking about Ben Sumahoro, a young man that makes an impact off of the bench. Watch that number two. He comes off of the bench, 12-7 uh, a game. Can shoot the three ball a little bit, not a lot, but he actually, if he, he, you give it to him, he'll take it. Summa Horrell's from Lawrenceville, Georgia. That's in the Atlanta metro area. There's Tobler, jump shot. He's, he's red hot today. That's eight points for Tobler. 15 to 13, cut the lead down to two. Tobler, a Philadelphia kid. Talk about uh, Any brotherly culture love. clash, right? Philadelphia <laughs> to yeah. Pippa Passes. Okay, Pippa Drew Thalwell's in now. Pippa Passes wouldn't fill up one of the I'll tell you all about uh, that. Here's nice back door. Oh, my gracious, almost got that play there. As Wolf found the man, he found Potter trying to take it, but he lost the ball out of bounds. It was a nice cut. In a, yes, in it good was. Effort. Was not quite able to make the connection. A lot of people may not know where... Alice Lloyd is. It's in Knott County, Kentucky, in Pippa Passes. It's about 30, 40 miles about west of Prestonsburg, if you want to know. There's another turnover. So in there. <laughs> 15 to 13. This is the fifth game in the series. Moorhead State leads it 4 0 the last time they met, November the 28, 2019. Moorhead won it that day 102 to 46. That was a couple of years ago. Serious history, of course. Nice to brought to you by Delta Dental. Unleash your smile power for Delta Dental. Nice, nice driving left. How about that in there? Nice play right there by Thelwell. He puts it up and in. Found that seam and laid it up and in. Really nice cut. He just, and I don't think that was part of the play. I think he just saw the seam open and he just made a cut and made himself available for the pass. They're young. Back up to Sumo Horos in there now. Watch this guy, he can play. There's Tobler again, he's feeling it tonight. He's percolating, but this time it goes off. No good, and with a rebound here, they come again. The guys in gold got the basketball. There's a nice penetration off of the dribble drive that time, it will not go for Cooper. 
again. Noah Young, young man from Highland, Kentucky. Tobler, crossover dribble. He can, he can play now, this guy can. Pull up, jump shot, in and out, just no good. Rebounded out of there again by Moorhead State. And Taylon Cooper's got the basketball. A little jump shot from the right wing by Potter will not go. Didn't look good from the time it left his hand. You see it was off just a little bit. Not a bad shot, though. No, it really wasn't. Nice hands that time, skying and elevating to get the basketball. Goes up to Wolf, put two in the book. Morehead State showing the defense that basically they, more, the Eagles hang their hats on, on how they play defense. They're not a real big fast break team, but they will take the opportunity like that. Exactly. They can turn over the other team and then turn it into some quick offense. There's a floater that will not go by Young again. And here's Wolf, likes to run down the court. Young man that can play play. Cooper, three ball from the left wing, air ball almost, and comes out of there, and Phil Potts got the rebound. Nineteen to thirteen, more hit by half a dozen. Full double. Absolutely. He's averaging fifteen point six points and ten point three rebounds per ball game. He's got six double doubles on the season, nineteen in his career, and he's just a sophomore. Something else, I'll tell you right now. Got some substitutions in right now for the basketball. Number one is Marcus Frazier, Marquis Frazier, out of Bronx, New York. There's Sue Mahoro trying to drive, gets a return pass, goes inside to knock somebody down. And we've got a charge, I'd say. Yeah, Drew Thelwell did a good job of moving his feet on defense. Jumped right in the way of the pass. We're going to see it right here. He beat the man to the spot, got himself positioned to establish defensive position. They call it defensive guard, legal guarding position. You have to have both feet on the floor facing the man. After that, you can move. You see, Thelwell was moving. His feet weren't set in clay. That's still a good call. Well, Alice Lloyd employs a 2-1-2 zone press, four-court press, but uh, the Eagles got through that with no problem at all. They've got the basketball under four court. There's Wolf has got the got the basketball back up to Potter. Long range is Drew Thelwell who comes up shot no good. Brian's got it. Want to shoot a hook shot, but he got hacked on the arm. L.J. Bryan has been a nice surprise this year. He's uh, started out the year probably number three in a depth chart as far as big men go, and he's. He's won some minutes, and he's uh, he's made the most out of a lot of his minutes. He's done a really good job. Uh, he doesn't average a whole lot of minutes. Um, averages about nine and a half minutes a ball game when he comes in. But he's really doing that when he spells Janai Broom, and he is, makes the most of his minutes. He's been a very pleasant surprise. Yes, he has, no doubt about it. He connects on the first one here for his first point of the game. Prior to that, he'd only shot six out of 12 from the free throw line all season long in the 11 games have been played, but he's got another one coming now. And that uh, gives them the longest lead of the game. The uh, Eagles now at seven, this could be eight right now. Brian can connect. Yeah, you said six of 12 in the season, and that's true. Yeah. It, but he's a better shooter than that. He, yeah. he showed that the two years previous. Uh, he's a big man, but he's got a nice touch uh, around the rim. He's got a nice touch with his jump shot. And uh, he just one of those anomalies, but I think we'll see him back up around 65. 68% when it's all over with this year. There's a tripping call out front there. You saw that one there. The foul is going to be on Drew Thelwell from Orlando, Florida. Young man who's had a great season so far. He's a freshman out of uh, Brand Orlando. Drew's a returning freshman. Again, the COVID year didn't really count last year yeah, toward anybody's uh, uh, that's eligibility. Yep. He, he, he played sparingly last year, played a little bit, but he's really come into his own this year, and he's actually gotten a couple of starts, and uh, he's an integral part of the rotation now. Here's Cumas to skates right now. He's got the basketball. I love that name. And here's a re nice driving layup by Frazier. Goes up and in there. Marquis Frazier gets his first two of the game. And here's a turnover right here at midcourt. That's They've got to come the other way. Cates back over to Sumo Horo. He wants to drive, and he said, yeah, I'm coming, get out of the way. But he walks with the basketball, turnover again. Yeah, Janai Broom was able to come back. He was coming back in transition defense, and he was able to, to basically influence, if you will, that. <laughs> yeah, intimidate. <laughs> yeah, that's a better word. <laughs> All right, they've got this 1-2-2 uh, two, two press this time, it looks like, and get the basketball back over to Thelwell. And we, and they're going to take some time and set it up, spread the spread the floor a bit. Alice Lloyd showing a man-to-man, -man, which they opened up in that 3-2. Yep. 
Seabreeze, here's a shot, long shot by Cooper, no good. Rebounded by Bryan. Lost, knocked loose, but we've got, well, we got a foul there, it looks like. Yeah. We got a rebound, uh, rebounding action foul as Broom went way up high in the air. And what did he get? I well, think he it was Cates. He's one of those that you say flies high or soars higher, I guess, yeah. is what it is, you know? Well, he's already pretty high. He's already 6'10. He didn't have as far as those, some of us. They did right. get Cates with the foul. Okay, Tobler's back in the ball game. Number 20 comes in with eight points in his back pocket. Down it goes in, down into Broom. He's wanting to work and operate in there. And uh, the shot is blocked, but he was knocked to the floor, so probably a foul here. No, no, they call it a tie up. A tie up. Dual possession then. It was a good job by Noah Cotter. You see it right here. You got his hand right on top of the basketball. And if that's one thing that a lot of people would, would uh, kind of give a, a, a negative for right. Janai Broom, he needs to get up a little bit stronger. I'd like to see him go up there and rip the rim off rather than just try a little jumper. All right, they'll be able to basketball outside now. Gets around, around the corner they go. Long shot. Not good that time by Hollowell. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> got a lump in my throat. Pretty good defense this time. Memorial State in the transition. They got back out, turned it around, not allowing the break. So Fraser has the basketball now, back over to Tober. He wants to drive, puts it up, no good. He's going to get it right now, 6 to 0, if you want to put yeah, that in your book. The mm. River States Conference is huge. It comes all the way, it runs down from yeah. uh, Point, Park, Point Park, which is in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, Midway's in it. Uh, of course, all, all kinds of schools. And Ryle Grand is in it. I, I think they're still I, in it. I thought I could be facetious, but <laughs> it looks like I mean, an encyclopedia. There is like 20. I think it was 23. I know. Members. It's huge. Well, 21-15. Moore has got some work to do. Short time to do it in first half. Around the corner it goes again. Down inside the broom. Triple team. Kick it back out. Inside out we go. And there's the three ball. Over there all by himself is Skyler Potter. And he gets his three, first one of the game. Well, he said he's all by himself, and he sure was. And the reason was, beautiful ball move by Memorial State. Inside out and around just to find him. That's his 24th tray of the season, by the way. Here's a nice hook shot down inside that time by Sturgill. Will not go. And Cooper drives into a crowd, and he's hacked and um, almost mugged. <laughs> Frazier came in late trying to get back on transition yeah. defense and thought he had a, a hole to swipe the ball loose and so on, was able to turn him away. So Jalen Seabree inbounds the basketball now. They'll set the table one more time. Back with a Potter, Cooper, looking for help. Goes inside there, here it goes, and the man, and they put it up, not good. The second time, we got a foul, though. They got the ball down into Seabree. He's a load in there, but he couldn't get it to go. Yeah, Jalen Seabree's transfer, and last year when he came in as his first year, they didn't really look a whole lot of scoring out of him, but he was Mr. Excitement. He was Mr. Make Something Happen, usually on the defensive end. He was uh, brought a lot of high energy to the, to the ball club whenever he would come in. This year, he's been a little bit of a better scorer, and he's actually shot the three very well. Uh, he came in shooting seven of 16. He's got one of one tonight from behind the arc. So. Yeah. Uh, he's he's done very, very well, and he's really improved his offensive game uh, from last year. There's the biggest change I can see with Jalen. His high game this season, uh, by the by, is uh, he had 13 against Presbyterian College. He had a nice ball. That was a nice night. That was probably the best <coughs> I've seen him play. You remember that? Because not only did he score, he played really good defense, too. And he dumps that one in. He's got uh, five points in the ballgame coming in, averaging 5.1. Young man from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Well, 25-15. That frames a nice 10-point 10, 10 lead now. Longest of the game for MSU. 6-11 to go in the first half. Alice Lloyd with the basketball. They like to do a lot of things. Here's Kate's going to drive the baseline. Cut off in there, but nice bounce, uh, shovel pass. Right there he was to Sturgill. That's a, 25, pretty, good cut. That's a pretty good cut by Tobler to come right around, right down the lane on the left side, and they found him wide open. He's a good man. Ten points for that guy. Well, here's Broom working one-on-one. -on -one. He's going down in the paint, but kicks a long range out to Halloween. Hallow oh, well, there it goes. 
Long rebound, and the Eagles got it coming the other way in blue. I still like the inside-outside action. Right. Tonight, Broom's a good passer. He's good at that. Bryce Sloan, it, interestingly enough, has in score, comes in averaging 10 a game. He has 33 trays on the season and has yet to score here in the first half. And he failed to catch that pass. Yep. That's on him. Yeah, that was an easy turnover. That's an unforced one. That's seven now. And Alice Lloyd for a state yep. at six. Good to see Tanjean Claude back in the ball game. Or a there first he action he's had in several games. His freshman year, two years ago, he was a really breath of fresh air. Didn't get to play at all last year. Had a season-ending ACL injury in the preseason. Didn't get to play. Well, he's, he's working his way back in. Uh, there's a long three ball that will not go by Threlwell, but uh, talking about Claude uh, real quick, like uh, he's only, this is his fifth game he's been in all season long. Right, yeah, he's, he's had some, some challenges in, in, in finding some minutes, but uh, a lot of people like Ty. They think he's going to be a good asset. And, you know, the thing about it, he had such a really good freshman year. I know he got some votes for freshman of the year in the OVC two years ago. When he got hurt, and I was actually here in the gym watching practice when he got hurt. Huh. And you could tell as soon as it happened, I mean, he was, it, was, it was serious. And the people I was with, we looked at each other and said, oh, you know, uh-oh, this is bad. <laughs> we didn't know Janai Broom. He was this really tall, skinny kid. He was a freshman. Didn't know what he was all about. First game of the year last year, he plays at Kentucky and earns a start huh. uh, because he played well. And then... The rest is history for Janai Broom. And, you know, one of the things that some of the people I talk with and we talk about different things and different scenarios is if they could do like an inside out with Ty and John Claude and Janai Broom on the floor at the same time, might be pretty interesting. Well, 27 to 17, the second 10 point lead that uh, Moorhead has. Thelwell skies to get the rebound. Out on the point, their freshman. Back over again to Potter. Farewell. Down the side, goes inside now, and twisting it. There's Claude. He gets the ball taken, gets the back up, and no good again. Too, a little too hard on the glass. That's all right, I like the, the I like the aggressiveness. He went right at the basket. Yes, he did. Well, here's Sloan's first. Uh, well, that one's partially blocked too, but good enough. And Moorhead's got to come any other way on the deflected ball. Here's Wolf spinning down on the paint. He's going to be knocked down here in the game against Alice Lloyd, the Eagles of Pippa Passes, Kentucky. They've got the basketball. They're in royal blue tonight. And there goes uh, Mr. Young. He's going to try to get inside, but he gets the ball to, well, there he had that one there. Phil Pot had a handle on it, but couldn't hold on. Turned over again. Moorhead has it. There goes Claude, jump shot from about nine, puts it up and in. And that's something that, 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 that Tyjean showed when he was a freshman. He can go out in the mid-range, maybe even out to 15 foot, and he's got a nice little soft touch with that's it. That's good. And, uh, and that would be, again, I, I can't wait to see he and Broom on the floor do a little inside-outside. Well, that would be a great combo. Be interesting. It really would. All right, with the basketball across the way now, they still, well, they've got an infraction here of some kind. Yeah, Tajon Claude came over a little bit of help defense and uh, got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. He's going yeah, she to did. pick up a foul for it. So he picks up the foul. That'd be number one on Claude. You see right there, he was hedging and and he was, he was kind of on the on the ball line defense and he just hedged over and just tried to give a little bit of help and eh, smack on the arm. Down inside the field, Potts splits two defenders, puts up the reverse and bingo, it's there. Yeah, that's a nice move by Mr. Phil Potts got five in the game. That's all he has, but it's been Tober so far in the first half. It's, Got the attention. So Moorhead now has some work to do. They've got plenty of time to do it. 2.42 to go in the first half. He goes inside to Claude. Back out again. Long range to. Uh, not this time. Going to be dropped, knocked around a couple of times. Wolf had a shot at it over there, but would not fall. Here's Tobler spinning on the baseline. Back out. Ball. We got a ball fake there, but he walks with a basketball. We're talking about Noah Young. That is nine turnovers in the uh, first half. Tonight, Broom back in as Tajon Claude goes out. His first action in a while, a game action. And, uh, nice minutes, and I kind of got a feeling we're going to have a healthy dose of Tajon Claude in this ball game. 
Well, for those of you who joined us late, maybe just joining us here, Alice Lloyd uh, has it coming in with a 13-0 slate. Here's a long three ball. Good. Not a no doubt about the Hollowell. His second trade of the ball game. 32-19, longest lead of the game. Minute 56 to go. Hard to believe that Bryce Sloan, number five, hasn't scored here in the first half. There's a, a give and go, but the ball's going to be knocked loose. And up the way it goes to Broom, he sees a wide open avenue and just puts it in gently. Yeah, no, I thought he was going to come in and try a big windmill dunk, but Noah Dion got in his way. That's oh. eight points for Janai Broom in the game now. 34-19. MSU by 15 big ones. 95 seconds left here in the uh, first half of play. So on the inbounded play, the guys in blue have got it again. Here again is Young back over to Sloan. He wants to put it on the floor. Jump shot from the wing, not this time. Way up to get it, tipped up and around a couple of times. But Moorhead's got it. And there's a foul in the backcourt. Sloan, out of frustration, did that. I guarantee you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> He's I mean, having, he can't buy one tonight. Yeah. I mean, Hollowell had to rebound, and Sloan... I don't know if he kept mm. thinking he had an opening there, but uh, Trey Hollowell is usually pretty uh, sure-handed with the basketball, and he's got it in both mitts. So the foul's on Sloan. At the line right now will be Hollowell, 66% from there. Before the game, he only shot four out of six, only six shots all season long. This one's no good, and they've got it coming the other way now. A minute 17 to go in the first half. 34-19, Moorhead. Commanding layout on top right now, and a very quiet crowd, by the way. Very quiet. Here's Young, back to Phil Pot. Gomes has Sloan again. He still can't buy one. <laughs> Shaking his head. Up the court it goes. Hollowell, back to Cooper for a three ball. Not there, and it's high rebound. It comes down and goes out of bounds. That was good vision on the pass by Hollowell. Yeah. Well, the game's been tied here in the first half at two and four. We've had about two to three lead changes, I recall. But other than that, it's been uh, it's a nice block right there. Look, it looked like it, Cooper blocked the basketball. Yeah, he did. Here's a replay of it. You can see it. Well, he's way yeah. up there. Talon, he, he, he can jump, and he's got it. He's a guard, but he's got an uncanny knack for blocking shots. He's got good timing. Got a good self-awareness of it. Here, Sturgill had a nice look that time. No competition really gets his first three of the game. That cut to the 34-22 now. Pretty jumper from the big man from Wise, yes, it is. Virginia. The uh, shot clock and the game clock are virtually almost the same. Just a couple of fractions of a click there, and that's about it. So 11 seconds to go on the shot clock. Moorhead would like to connect here before intermission. There it is, a three ball from the long range, no good that time by Threlwell, and he goes out of bounds. So 1.3 seconds left. Gonna get Skyler Potter in for Threlwell. Potter's a better shooter. Wouldn't this surprise me, just let him pop right out there. There you go. And cut it loose. There he goes on a curl. Oh, they're gonna give it to Hollowell. So Hollowell's gonna shoot it up. Into you know, a pickup ball on a, on, a, on a Saturday night. Well, the guys in the gold jersey have got the basketball now to begin the second stanza. And they've got it now leading it by 12. And uh, Potter across the way back over to Hollowell with the basketball. Cooper down the inside it goes to Wolf. He wants to shoot, can't do it. Bounce pass to Broom. Nice play. The south ball off of the square. Great play. And that's because Sturgill had pretty good position on Janai Broom. And Broom, yeah. I like it when he goes very quickly and decisively like that, and he kissed it off the glass. Very nice touch. Ten in the game now for Janai Broom. And uh, here's down inside it goes. They try to get the basketball there and kind of whoop, try to shovel pass and is intercepted. And that'll be the 11th turnover for Alice Lloyd. A long three ball from the uh, downtown someplace. Hollowell drills it. That's his third of the day. He got nine points now. So with that, 39-22. That's a 17-point lead, the longest of the game. Dobler 
was a force to be reckoned with in the first half, had 10 points, but right now they're trying to give it to uh, Mr. Young. He's trying to create out there. Tober wants to shoot. He's double teamed in there. Shoots anyhow, bangs it off the glass too hard. You see, it looks like Morehead State's coming out in the second half early with a little more uh, fire in the bellies, if you will. Exactly, and there's a nice move again by Broom. He gets down inside there. He's got five unanswered points, 11 in the game now, and they get it down inside to him. He's got that such a soft touch. Yeah, he's, he's, he really does. He's a load for just about anybody to do anything with. And you get 41. The NAIA center trying to touch him, and it's 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 a it's a tough job. Well, here's Philpott trying to create there and split two defenders, but the worst part about it is he goes down himself trying to do that. We got a foul. If you do that, somebody's going to get called for a foul, and either one. You can see it there. He split the two defenders, and it could be on Broom or Wolf. Yeah, they got Broom, and Janai, I don't think, was real thrill thrilled with the call, but it is what it is. Janai, it you is. Your second first one. Well, Phil Pot at the line throws up a brick, not there. He has five points in the first half, 76% from the line. High game this year, if you're wondering about Phil Pot, he had 19 points against Campbellsville. Kind of up a, and in. It's not a pure motion. Yeah. He's a 76% free throw shooter, which is pretty good, but uh, just his motion is not, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm going to watch him shoot a couple more times, see if I can figure it out. It looks different. Right, there's a long start from the wing over there, and how about Mr. Potter drills another one from way downtown. He kind of fell backwards after the shot into the bench. Now that's a stroke right there. He just went up, and that's to put a beautiful spin on the ball. Gordon Spradlin, coaching staff, got the attention of the Eagles a little bit. They've come out with a little more intensity, playing a little bit better defense, or having a moving a little more purpose both on both ends of the floor. There's a loose basketball there. Broom had a handle on it, and then it went out, lost out of bounds. Let's see, they're going to give it uh, to Ellis Lloyd again. So with that in mind, it's Noah Young, the guy's handled the ball, but here's the young man number five. You see him there. He has not scored today. And uh, here's a jump shot from about eight, not that time, and taken out of there by Hollowell. He's on the fly, jumps over to Potter. Potter wants to fly, let it fly, will not go. And a rebound by Broom. Long Oops. skip pass that goes out of bounds. Turnover yeah. there, Jani, be number eight. Janai's going to get a, a, a turnover on that, but I'm going to give you some kudos. He contested the shot down on the baseline. He beat almost everybody back down the floor. He ran the floor, filled the lane. That's how he was able to get that rebound on the offensive end. Exactly. That's a good point. Well, here's Young again. He's running the show out front. He's going to try to get in and force one up. It's an air ball, but uh, he might have been hacked on the arm here. I think he was. Got a little bump from Cooper. Cooper uh, was on his hip, and, uh, and a good job by Young. We'll see it right here. Young, as he turns the corner, jumps back up into Coop. And that pretty much forces the official to blow the whistle. Young at the line, 77% on the season. He's a southpaw, put that up and in. Three points for him. Only the second point here in the second half for Alice Lloyd. They went into a drop that has yet to get a field goal. Tobler started the basketball game with five field goals and red hot. Young connects. And it's uh, 44, now down to 19. Again, at 2-2-1, full court press. They don't look to do a whole lot of it. They will come up and trap yeah. some, but it's not a it's not a really blistering press. Sometimes it mutates to a 1-2-2. Uh -huh, <laughs> it know? does. All right, here again with the basketball. We've got to get down inside there. Nice play. How about that one, huh? How, how about uh, Mr. Bryan forcing one up? with some power and putting it through. Yeah, L.J. Bryan again, he's spelling Janai Broom, and he's uh, one of those guys, that, again, he's not getting a lot of minutes, but he's making the most of the minutes that he is getting. Alice Lloyd seems a little bit bewildered right now. Maybe it's my imagination, but they, they look like they're very troubled. And Well, I think Morehead State's troubled because they started playing better defense. Yeah, and they're used to nearly doing what they want to do, and here's a a shot from the left wing by Tober, no good again. They get the offensive rebound. Young will hand it back to Sloan. This, this guy's having a nightmare. Here's Tober, going to do a reverse, and he does so. Pretty nice move, pretty nice cut by Tober. He saw what was going on. Just a little backdoor baseline cut. He's got 12 in the game. He can score. He uh, did score 21 this season against Welch. But 
It's 46-27 here. Where is Welch? Uh, when I ever heard of it was in West Virginia. Welch, West Virginia. Here's Brian with the basketball. Back out again to Potter. Let's it fly. He's got that one down. Another three by Skyler Potter. His uh, 25th of the season, by the way. Second of the game. And the score escalates now to 49-27. 22. There's a driving layup. Nice. That's a good one right that time. Going laterally. Noah Young puts it up and in. That's a good way to beat the press. Just pass over it and pass around it. Still plenty of time left. Hard to believe there's 15 minutes virtually in this game left. There's a driving layup this time. Potter got his own rebound. Back to Hollowell. Way well. <laughs> I'll get it right in a minute. Shot's no good, of course. <laughs> this is a nice driving up. This is what he does well. He's young, got six points today in the second half and drives well with the ball. But I thought they played better than I've seen them play. Yeah, there was a, a vast improvement, no doubt about it. This game has pretty much played out the way I thought it was going to. So here we go, back to play again as the guys work a weave out front. Hallowell with the basketball, back over to Threlwell now. They play pass at long range. Dropped it, here's Potter from the wing. Yes, mark it down. Four, three, three trays quarters. here in the second half. Oh, yeah, four of them. Four total, yes. Four total, but three in the second half. He's, he's, he's cooking, he's percolating, he is. Yes, sir. Skyler has been a welcome addition since his transfer from Wright State last year. There's Tobler trying to penetrate and split two defenders. Bad idea. Loses the basketball. Another, another turnover. It's 14 in the game now. Here again from uh, the favorite spot. Mark it down again. Jalen Seabree. The, Sebring. The Hopkinsville native transfer from Florida Atlantic. That's his second tray of the game. And uh, he's, he's doing all right today. 55-31. 24-point lead. Longest of the game. There's an air ball, but put back up a Tober again, not there. And uh, Moorhead can relent relentlessly just on the attack. Here's Threlwell again from the three part. Yes, far, mark it down. Threlwell with a three ball. Moorhead State now from behind the arc in the ball game. 11 of 26, 42%. That'll do it. 42 That's will excellent. do it. 58-31, 27-point lead. 12.54 to go. Here's Young trying to force one up. High rebound and lost out of bounds. And Jalen Seabree is kicking himself. He thought he should have <laughs> been able to control that rebound. As he will come out. Hell, uh, Hollowell comes out and Jake Wolf back in. And then first time we've seen Tucson Redding in the ball game from Aurora, Colorado. Yep. Young man out there. Played seven ball games this season coming in. Always uh, contributes somewhat. There's a nice hook shot that time by Philpott. Gets a field goal. 58-33. So Tucson Redding. Getting, he got hacked twice there, no call. But uh, real well with the basketball. Back at a long range. Redding wants to shoot. Hands it over, but hands it over to the three. Number three, Threlwell gets another three. That's the 105th tray, I might add, on the season for the Eagles. 105, that's a bunch. They've shot a bunch. That's 24 that have been in. Nice shot that time by Neil Koff. Throttle gets in, getting into the ball game. From Viper, Kentucky. 61-35. There's Wolf for the three ball, high rebound off the heel of the rim. Brian wants to shoot, not there. Fans it back out, they'll set the table. Well, going down the lane, nice shovel pass, but knocked out of bounds. Yeah, but they, they play well here. They, they play better at home than they do on the road. And, uh, that said, uh, they're going to have to get on the road here pretty quickly because uh, conference play is just around the corner. But they're going to have to go on the road and play well. How about uh, Mr. Redding there? Has another three ball. 64-35. Tucson gets his first points of the fracas. That's a walk. Yeah. So we'll turn it back and come the other way right now, real quick, like. Right? 
If yes. my uh, calculations are right, Moorhead has 13 trays in the ball game. We got a bundle. Is that about 13 right? 13 to 29. 13 percent. That's good. That'll do it, won't it? Yes, sir. That'll get the job done. That has really broken the back of Alice Lloyd this afternoon. The three ball. Well, they're eight of 11 behind the arc this half. Yeah. There's that's a, a ball that's thrown away again. They aren't passed, so we get up to coming in. That's uh, what uh, nine turnovers. All right, Alice Lloyd going back to work. They've got a uh, lot of work to do and a short time to do it in. And the bounce pass goes inside. That uh, Frazier will, will not go. And to bring it back the other way. Here's Thelwell quickly down. Wide open is uh, Hollowell for a second. Get it down to Bryant. He's double teamed. Oh, oh look at that feet. pass. Beautiful pass. Oh, it did not go. And Bryant gets the garbage and puts it back up and in. LJ didn't get the assist, but he was able to get an offensive rebound and points. But what a really nice speed. And Drew Thelwell did a good job, just shot the gap on the dive right toward the rim, just couldn't finish. He sure did a great job, as they say, on the dribble drive. 10-13 <laughs> to go. Sue Mohoro wants to do something on the, on the far side, but he's been very silent, too, hasn't Charged. scored. He puts one up, and he got a calling for a charge that time. Yeah, that's easy. He dropped his shoulder and went right in. It's his second. Right here, we'll show on the replay. And Tucson Redding did a good job of maintaining his position, and Somaharo just put a shoulder down right into his sternum. Well, he again seems to be another one's frustrated, too, because they're, they're not getting the shot that they like, the result that they like. The Moorhead defense has pretty much stifled them today. But at any rate, though, here we go. Let's get see what we can do now. Now, see, Moorhead State's got, we were talking about at halftime, they've got Tyjon Claude and Janiah Broom in the ballgame at the same time. Do it a little and bit Claude of power action. I want to see this Claude's down at the low block right now. There's a high rebound taken. Well, nice, nice play that time by Frazier, but he goes down and goes out of bounds. Nice block. <coughs> Excuse me. Play on transition defense and Talon Cooper again with his yep. second block. Yeah, Cooper elevates too pretty well. Cooper does, and he's, he's good at it. That gives him, I think it's 14, 12 blocks on the season. Came in with 10, he's got two tonight. So here's Case with a three ball from way out there, no good, and Broom goes up to get the rebound. Not sure if that's a shot to, to the basketball Scott now. Was looking for. Here comes Cooper. Cooper pulls up, lets it fly, mark it down again. Got eight in the game now, Taylon does. And 68 to 35, he's just getting bigger all the time. Yeah, Morehead State's on a 19 to four run now over almost the last five minutes. Yeah, it's hitting fat, fat, fat. Second half, Morehead State played better defense, a lot better than the first half. Sure has. They came out with just generally a lot more energy in this, in this half than they did in the first half. Gates. We're going to back outside again. He wants to, he ball fakes, pulls inside the arc. Long rebound, and again, Broom sweeps it up. Been waiting all day to say that, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Cooper. Going to get inside there and going to turn, spin, does a, almost a pirouette and puts it up, but he's going to be fouled. So on to get to the free throw line. Try to get his six and seven points. The charity stripe. You see, they just kind of cleared out and let Talon just drive the lane himself. And he kind of got in there and didn't have much to do with it, so he decided to go up with it. Cooper cans the first one. That gives him uh, nine in a game. He comes in averaging nine a game. He's got his average. A lot of people, you may remember this. He had a double double against Trancy 12 points yes. and 12 assists, I think it was. Yes. You remember that game? I do. Played well. Talon Cooper has played very well this whole season. Uh, in fun fact, he leads the entire Ohio Valley uh -huh. Conference in minutes played. And some of that is due to uh, Jalen Hall, the other transfer from Wright State, has had battled a, a, an ankle in, in, in injury. Uh, so that has uh, necessitated Talon playing probably some more minutes than I think uh, Preston Spradlin would want him to. But... Uh, uh, he's played very, very well and running the show most of the time from where it stayed. Talking about the show right now, here's 
Mr. Vaughn spins, puts up that jump shot. Nice touch, but it hit the back of the rim and out of there. Yeah, Tyson John Clyde had it up there on the rim, just wouldn't go down for him. So Alice Lloyd, number one out there with the basketball is Marquis Frazier. Back to Kate. Cumulus Cates. Yeah, almost lost the ball out of bounds. A lot of dribbling going on, not a lot of it. Here's a ball fake. Phil Pot had it, but now take it. Cates runs it down. Now the pass goes out of bounds. It'll be more. The guys in gold got the, the basketball again. Yeah, Morehead State's on a big old run. 24, 20 to four over the last six minutes plus. And couple that with that uh, other run they had, 10-1 run. The long, oh my gracious, way out there for Trey Hollywell. His fourth Trey of the ball game. And that gives him 35 on the season. And the lead just keeps moving. There's a ball faked, long shot, bingo. And that is Cameron Works who gets the three ball. Works from Pikeville, Kentucky. There's a nice driving layup that time, put up and in by Jason Seabury again. Looked like Seabury might have caught a spare finger in an eye or something as he went up. Jalen looks like he's going to be all right, be able to stay in the ball game. Here's a replay on you can see this here. Right there is where he got it. Yeah, that's what I the, the secondary, and nothing worth looking at. Cottle just caught him with a spare finger. 74-38, 36-point lead with seven minutes to go, which seems like right now an eternity. Here's Vaughn with the loose ball and putting a nice, nice layup that time. No doubt about it about Redding. He's got five points in the ball game. Redding had a good game against Trance. He had eight that time. That's his high season, yep. high game this season. Redding's play. another guy that's uh, kind of trying to search for some minutes. Yeah. But he's uh, – as long as he keeps working hard and, and keeps a, 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 a adjusting, and uh, he'll he'll find those minutes. Well, there was Case driving up, and uh, you saw the layup. It wasn't even close, but uh, they're having a tough time. The guys in blue are tonight. They uh, are really the things they normally do. They can't do. There's a foul, but uh, you can attribute that to Moorhead's defense. They're, they're in yeah. their kitchen. Well, Moorhead's got some some. Uh, uh, a little bit different than the last couple of years. They, now they have, the last two years, they've had a rim protector with Janai Broom. Tajon Claude can do that a little bit as well. And But watch the defense he plays. It's Sturgill really made a nice shot there, but there was nothing wrong with the defense of Claude there. He did yeah. everything he was supposed to do. That's a nice bank in that time. Good good uh, follow through fundamentally. And puts it up and in for his, uh, his field goal. 76-40. Again, free ball by... Not this time. There. First miss of Seabree behind the arc. He's two of three tonight now. That'll get it done. Yeah, Jalen's played well. He's got ten. All points. right, here's a wide open seam this time and going to slam it down was Potter. He saw the opening just for a split second because I'm coming to get out of the way and they hammered him down. Skyler Potter's only 6'3". And but you can see here <laughs> on this replay, you find an open lane, and he has springs. He uh, he plays a lot bigger than he actually is. He plays tougher. Yeah, he's probably yeah. to me, he's probably the toughest player more Red State has. He leads the team in, in drawing charges. Uh, he just does so many little things well, especially little dirty things like really he's locking down somebody on defense. That's what Preston Spradlin and the staff look for him to do. He does it very well. Well, somebody opened up the. Uh the treasure chest of talent today for <laughs> more. They've got, they got a ton of it here today, and it's all being, uh, I, I guess, manifested in this game. This is the second shot good. 15 in the game now for Skyler Potter. Comes in averaging 11 and a half. And into the game, let's see who we got now. And for Moorhead, looks like Brandon Mays in from Maysville, 5'10 freshman. Right, freshman from Mason County High School there in Maysville. He's a walk-on. Yep. He's Doesn't a walk -on. get a lot of play. Sloan still having that nightmare. He can't get loose to shoot a three ball, do anything. Across the young, he's got it. 
October says, I got to do something. Somebody help me. Now here goes. Nice driving layup, and he might have been fouled in there, no doubt about it, by Claude. Yeah, Tajan cut himself a little bit behind. He was in a help position, and then we'll see it right here. Yeah, you can. When Young kind of went off that little rub screen, Tajan was just maybe a little late in doing the switch, and he cut himself behind. So at the line right now is Noah Young. Get up. 8.9 point, points in the ball game. The only senior listed on the Alice Lloyd roster. That's, that's true. Six foot senior. Stepping in. That puts him 10 points on the board now for him, but it, the score now 78 to 42. The cruise is on right now, but you can believe Alice Lloyd ain't going to quit. They're, they're a gamey bunch. Well, the president's Bradlin doesn't want this to, do, yeah. know, to turn into a pickup game either. He wants the guys exactly. to still run your patterns, run your plays, do what you do. There you saw that the contact as Tucson Redding was trying to drive. He was hammered a couple of times right out long range. So that's going to stop play. So on the common foul, we'll inbound it right now in front of the uh, Moorhead bench. Brandon May from Maysville or Mason County. Claude wants to do something. There he goes. Nope, kicks it back at long range. May, air ball by May. Goes out of bounds. Well, Dave Bryant tried to keep it alive, but couldn't quite bring it down. Murray State second half, 16 of 25 from the field to 64%. Thank you, Doctor. That is red hot. That gets it done, huh? Yes, it does. They're nope. 9 of 15 from behind the arc. That's but an even 60%. Without any questions, there's a, another long three ball that time by Cameron Works, but hit the side of the backboard. Or <laughs> with the basketball again, trying to get into Stellwell. Bounce pass inside to Brian, but knocked away. It's a tough pass. It is. The bounce pass is a net. There's a line. It should be a two right there. And uh, the score should be for him, for Noah Young. Drew Thelwell came over on the on the break late. He was the second defender to come in. They're going to get him with a foul. He went up high up in here. You can see the replay here. And you can tell he was going up as far as he could go to try to block the shot. <laughs> he got to the free throw line. He already had his mind made up. He was going to go up. Well, Young's back at the free throw line again. He's five for five there today. And he's 77%. Had a double-double this season, the young man did. He got 13 tonight. <clears throat> 78-45. Moorhead by a bunch. Down the side it goes to Brian right now. He wants to work. Kicks it back to Thelwell for a three. Yes. Bang it in. Drew Thelwell. Got eight in the game now. Yeah, he's three of six from behind the arc. How about that? Three of six is a big whopping 5-0. That'll get it done, huh? 81-45. Three forty to go. Long jump shot this time, no good, an air ball. That was by Sloan, he's still having that nightmare. Oh, uh, they play well at home. Uh, their next home action will be actually the conference opener. They play puts on the 29th against Eastern Illinois. All right, back we go. Alice Lloyd has the basketball out front. Now that's Cameron Warwick's there. He came in a little bit ago and he's been hanging around. There's a double dribble. And uh, the ball will go back the other way. It's 17 turnovers now for Alice Lloyd. Lloyd State at 12. Well, they, you know, they, this is not characteristic. They only average nine on a normal day, but yeah. uh, today, well, they, as you said, 17. They're not used to quite this level of athleticism. No, it, against. It, it's just very, very manifested. There's a nice Vaughn strong move inside. Nice job by Tyson Claude. Good to see Tyson make a nice, positive, right. strong move to the exactly. bucket. And the lead balloons now to 83-45. This basketball, goes, I think they're going to say Boarhead ball. End of the game for um, Alice Lloyd Blaine Keithley, number four, 6'5 freshman from Winchester, not far from here, right down the road. 
He and Will Philpott, both uh, products of George Rogers Clark. Right. And the ball goes out of bounds, and uh, they'll retain it. Have you seen George Rogers Clark there in Winchester, their athletic facilities? No. It's worth your while. I, d I did a football game there back a thousand years ago, well, in, a, in, a, in a high school game. But <laughs> I'm sure it's changed a lot. Well, it's not even, yeah. They, they, of course, they built uh, a whole new school there uh, on Boonesboro Road, and their athletic facilities, their baseball field is probably the third best baseball field in the state, maybe fourth. How about the that? only ones better I can think of is UK, U of L, and maybe the Boy. Louisville Bats. Boy. Maybe. Well, Brian uh, put one on the board a minute ago, and the lead is 85 40. It's the longest lead, Dean. Yep, and it's going to get longer, I'm thinking. Comes here with a minute 53. A lot of people now, they usually uh, get to play a lot of uh, reserves during games like this. Here again is uh, Tyshawn Claude, and he is fouled this time. And again, nice positive move by Ty. Yeah. Just gets the ball up there in the high post. Just takes a nice, good, strong step. We'll see right here. They give him the right-hand side of the lane. He just goes up strong. Couldn't get it to go down, but he's going to get a chance to the free throw line. Well, for the season, uh, Ty Sean has had three for five on the season. Maybe three for six now, but 60% on the line before that. Ty I remember from his freshman year, his first year here, he would shoot one and just, I mean, it would look like uh, the gyroscope was off. Yeah. And then the second one would look just like that, just smooth and pretty and nice touch. Jani Broom does a little bit of that at times, too. All right, Alice Lloyd with the basketball again. They've got it out front. Warwick has the ball. He's trying to find something out there, but not a lot there to do with it. And there's Sumohoro with a jump shot from that 15 out there. Rebounded by Claude. Way up to get it. So right now, there are 70 clicks on the clock left in this basketball game, 86-45, loose ball there, getting it down, and there is Claude who's trying to put it up. He got hammered on the uh, on the arm and fell pretty bad. But you know, it's a 31 or 41 point game, and look at the effort from LJ Bryan hitting yeah. the deck on a loose ball and then feeding his teammate to for if not a sure two, then he's going to go to the free throw line. So see, these are those kudos little, to L.J. Bryant. These are these little things you don't see a lot. They don't show up in the score box. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to see that. It's just mm. a hustle play. But exactly. You guarantee mm. that the coaching staff and his teammates noticed the hustle. Well, Clyde's got six in the game now. With a minute to go, 87-45, a 42-point bulge for Moorhead State. Works. Out on the point. And going to drive down through there. Partially blocked, but it's going to bangle in there. So Warks gets his first two of the night. Take that back. He has five. He had a tray earlier in the game. 87-47. Long. There, get, nope, there was Brandon May trying to get that one. It couldn't go. Everybody in the gym wanted Braden May to get his chance at his first points of the season. That came up well short. He is a fan favorite, I assume. Yeah. Walk on. Of course he is. Most walk ons are. So Brady Nelson with the basketball back to Sumahoro now. He's going to try to do something here, drop a pass down. There it is. Not well, couldn't get that one to go. Again, Ty Jean Claude came over, rim protecting. And Keith Lee could not score. So this game's going to be over in just a second. 87 to 47, the final score as Moorhead State moves out now to seven and five on the season.